Uh, I was also in this meeting that uh, our friend Rochefort referred to before in, in, in Paris last Saturday. And it was really very encouraging and very impressive to see the level of support the Iranian resistance uh, has uh, both la sides of the, of the Atlantic. Uh, there was there uh, Nicole Fontaine, former president of, of this parliament. <laughs> Uh, Rudolf Giuliani was there, the former mayor of New York, Pat Kennedy, uh, Michael Mukesi, the former uh, uh, attorney general of the United States, uh, many distinguished members of the French uh, parliament, l'Assemblée Nationale, and also the Senate. Um, so it was really uh, an important gathering uh, on the occasion of this uh, anniversary of the um, of the collapse of the Shah regime and the, and the arrival of, of Khomeini to, to Iran. <coughs> and many interesting things were said in this, in this uh, meeting, as they have been said here, here today. Uh, in the 14 years, I've been working very closely to, with our friends of the Iranian resistance. I've noticed that, in general, there are exceptions. Eh? In, in this parliament, there are some notorious exceptions. But in general, in general, parliaments support the Iranian resistance. The judiciary that acts objectively in Western world, a judge, in, in principle, <laughs> is objective and independent. The judiciary have always uh, ruled in favor of the Iranian resistance. For instance, in the delisting, they have been delisted in Washington, they have been delisted in Europe, they have been delisted in London, and a few days ago, the French judiciary ruled a final ruling clearing completely the Iranian resistance of any accusation in France. So, the judiciary uh, always has ruled in favor of the Iranian resistance. In parliaments, this parliament, for instance, the French parliament, the Swedish parliament, the German parliament, the American Congress, the, the Belgian parliament, there are many, many members supporting them. And the problem is always governments. And every time I speak to a minister, I speak to people in the commission, you know, executive power, always the same problem. Uh, they are a grouplet, a grouplet, tiny, a tiny thing with irrelevant <laughs> grouplet. Uh, they are a sect, a sect of people fanatized. And there is a cult of personality uh, for Maria Rashami. No? Every time the same thing. And of course, accusations from the past of collaborating with Saddam, of uh, attacking the Kurds, all these lies. And every time I have to repeat all the arguments and the facts and the information to prove them that these are all intoxications from the regime. But the fact that it goes on and on and on means that this work of the regime has been very effective. So my appeal to you is that we must, we, we must never rest uh, uh, counteracting this campaign because these cliches are there and they are extremely harmful uh, for our cause. A grouplet, I mean, a grouplet can gather 100,000 people in a rally? I mean, I mean, we are all politicians. A grouplet of 100,000 people, for God's sake. This is a mass movement, not a grouplet. No? Or a cult of personality. I mean, if there is a person that refuses all cult of personality, it's Mariam Rajavi. She's very humble, she's very open, but no cult of personality. Also, these stories about the Kurds, about collaboration with Saddam, I mean, 
Of course the movement was in Iraq because it was the only place where they were welcome in the whole world. And the governments, the governments uh, normally are influenced by the fear they have uh, to the regime because they can organize terror, terrorism, act, terror acts, the fear to the nuclear program of the regime and they think that if they appease and they negotiate, they can stop them. Also, economic interest because very big companies and corporations in Europe uh, have big business in Iran, let's say it clearly, and they influence the governments. And also, the regime, the Iranian regime, has a lot of money, huge sums of money, that they use adequately to, let's say, influence people. So that's why the governments uh, always have this, uh, keep this distance to the Iranian resistance. And uh, in many occasions, they have uh, persecuted them just to please the Iranian regime. So, uh, what I wanted to transmit today to you here, dear colleagues, is that we must, all of us, uh, parliamentarians or former parliamentarians, we must be in a permanent diplomatic campaign uh, against these cliches and uh, defending the Iranian uh, resistance. Because we must compensate for decades of intoxication campaign from the regime. So this is our, this is, I think, one of our most important, important uh, missions. And um, my conclusion after 14 years working with Iranian resistance and then CRI and PMOI, and I'm not a newcomer in politics, I've been in politics for 26 years, so it's, it's, not, it's not easy to cheat me, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. And uh, I can assure you that my conclusion is that this is a democratic movement, a truly democratic movement, with a political program that all of us could sign and is the only effective tool for real change in Iran. Thank you, Thank you uh, Nico.